Hey everyone, so it's Hearth and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is one I'm really excited about. It is going to be an unboxing and walkthrough of the Living Altar Oracle deck. <music> So I've been waiting for this deck for months. I backed this on Kickstarter in early October 2019 and it arrived yesterday morning all the way from America and I am so unbelievably excited. This is one of those decks where the moment I saw the imagery of it, I had to get it. Now I will say that as of right now, this deck is only arriving for the people who backed it on Kickstarter but there will be a link down in the description box for where you will eventually be able to buy the deck from. It's just that having the Kickstarter people get it first and then they're going to start producing it for everyone else. So I'm not sure as of when you're watching this whether or not the deck is currently available, but either way, the website, Instagram links, everything else will be down in the description box so that you guys can go and support them and check it out for yourself. This deck attracted me for a couple of reasons. The first being the imagery. It's absolutely beautiful. As far as I'm concerned, it's probably the prettiest Oracle deck I have ever seen because it's so unique in its style. But the way it looks wasn't the only thing that attracted me. It was also how it was made, why it was made and who made it. The individuals that created this deck aren't run-of-the-mill illustrators. A lot of the decks that you will find on the market today are created by the same handful of people. The artwork is usually largely the same style and they're designed to look pretty and to be used in readings, but they aren't really used for anything else. The people that created this deck had a different process in mind and they wanted people to use it very actively in their magical practice as well as their spirituality and for divination. For me anyway, one of the biggest things is that they are also practitioners and that's really important to me. As a practitioner, I like using cards like this in my magical workings and I find that a lot of illustrators, they don't really have that in mind. This deck is designed to be a living altar. It's designed to be something that you use actively in every aspect of your practice, whether that be for divination or for spell work and ritual, adding onto altars, adding into offerings, adding into ceremonies used during meditations. These cards can be used in so many ways. And because the people that created the deck are practitioners in their own right, the energy of this deck is so powerful. I could feel it through the screen as I was looking at it on Kickstarter. There's something about it. There's something so tactile and tangible, so real and raw. A lot of the cards are spell cards. They have energy added into them. They've been worked on with spells and rituals. They've had elemental energy and just intention added into them as they've been created. And for me anyway, I can really feel that when I'm looking at the imagery. And that's really important to me. It's really important for me to have cards that have power, that have significance, that have their own energy, not just pretty pictures. So the deck itself is really, really chunky. It is a hefty deck. I'm not sure what I was expecting, but this is beyond anything I was imagining. It's so heavy. It's probably best described as being the weight of a cat or a small dog. That's kind of the weight of this deck. I know it's not the best description of weight, but it really is all I can think of. This is probably the heaviest deck I've ever owned and I have some big decks. This is super duper weighted. It's beautifully packaged. The imagery is just stunning and it's everywhere. It's down the sides, it's over the top, it's on the back as well. There's something about this that is just so beautiful. It's also in a soft touch mat, which is my personal favorite material when it comes to deck and deck boxes. Honestly, it's bigger than I thought it was gonna be and I'm really, really happy about that. I love Oracle decks to have a size to them, to have weight, to have presence, especially if I'm using it in a spell or ritual. I don't want a little tiny deck, I want something with some substance and this definitely has substance. Now the back is just as beautiful with these three sample cards across the top and then a little bit of a blurb. So I'll go ahead and read that so that you guys can get an idea of what this deck is like from the people that actually created it. The Living Altar Oracle deck is a living grimoire 
with each card a charged spell. It is a guide to the witch's wheel and is intended to serve as both a tutelary and divinatory aid for the curious observer of witching ways, the novice witch, seasoned practitioners and the weathered witches among us. With this deck, we have built an altar of the seasons, the phases of the moon, the stations of the sun, the journey of life, and have made a holy embodiment of our most sacred relationship with the elements. Each card has been blessed with the elements and infused with spells to empower your inherent magic. Engage these oracle cards as you would any divinatory tool to enhance your intuitive readings. Now, the moment that I realized that this was a spelled deck, I was so excited about it. There is something about a deck that is created by a practitioner for a practitioner that is so different, so unusual, and I absolutely had to get one for myself. Now at the very bottom here, it does tell you how much this deck is going to be in dollars. So this deck is $65. Now I don't know what that is in pounds, but currently it is retailing for $65, although I don't think it's available just yet. So when you open up the box, the first thing that you see is a book. Now I love decks that have these really large substantial books in them. There's something about having a book this size that just makes me feel so much happier with a deck. I don't know about you guys, but I personally can't stand those little booklety things some decks have. They're annoying, they rip, they get in the way. They just aren't suitable for a deck that you're gonna be using for the next 10, 20 years. They're gonna fall to pieces, you're gonna lose it. I much prefer books. And this is a really, really nice one. So this book has the same artwork on the front, and then it also has the same information on the back as well. So first thing first, there is a table of contents. Now I really love it when tarot and oracle books have this, it makes it really easy to find exactly what you want. So in this book, there is a section on the modern witch's zeitgeist, answering magic's call, a little bit about the living altar oracle deck itself, the witch's wheel, building a relationship, potential spreads, the cards, the first arc, second arc, third arc, and spell cards. Now this deck, is quite unusual in the way it's being created. Now, typically, oracle decks are just a range of cards. They have no suits, they have no associations. They are simply a selection of cards that have their own meanings. This deck has actually been broken down into several different sections. Now, there are 52 divination cards. So these are the cards that you're gonna be using for your spiritual readings, for your divination purpose. There are then 14 spell cards that are an addition to this. So in total, you get 66 cards, 52 reading cards, and 14 spell cards. Now the reading cards are divided up into three arcs. These are three different sections where the cards have different meanings. So the first arc is known as the narrative arc. It is cosmic source cards, elemental origins, and natural cycles. These cards represent the source, elements, seasons, moon phases, and stations of the sun. They are designed to help us find balance, direction, and equilibrium. Now the second arc are known as the life path cards. These cards are the phases of life and are all about divine intervention. They represent the phases of life, such as rites of passage, as well as seasonal points of power, the sabbats, and they encompass the divine intervention that we can draw power from. So some examples of the card include rebirth, emergence, childhood promise, adolescence, celebration, abundance, generosity, and solitude. So these represent the aspects of life, and we can really pinpoint the context of a reading from these cards, and they also give us deeper insight on aspects of life. Now, the third arc is known as the Everyday Magic Cards. Now, these are elemental magic and practical moments in life. They are daily opportunities that help us to connect with our altar, spirits, and simply being a witch and being a practitioner. They carry us through the elements and teach us about life and magic and how they can assist us. Now, these cards are slightly different in that they go into elemental suits. So you have the earth, air, fire, and water, but they aren't simply earth or fire 
or air or water. Instead, they encompass how each element interacts with one another. Every single element in the world interacts with other elements. And for a lot of us, elemental magic is solely separated into the four Western elements. Now, I really like this way of dividing it because what a lot of us that work with the elements don't take into consideration is that the elements aren't singular. The earth element doesn't exist by itself in solitude. It actually interacts with all of the other elements. And this deck really takes that into consideration. So you have earth of earth, earth of air, earth of fire, earth of water, and all of the elements interact with each other in their own individual cards that can massively, massively help us understand aspects of life. So this deck is really unusual in how it breaks the cards down, but it makes so much sense. And that's what I really like about this deck. You have the elements, you have the seasons, you have the sabbats, you have the phases of life, you have the aspects of life that we may encounter as we travel through it. You have everything in this that encompasses a worldly view. And I really like that because a lot of Oracle decks will focus on mermaids or King Arthur or fairies. This deck is actually looking at life from a stepped back perspective. Every card is something that we can all relate with, if not now, then in the future or in the past. It encompasses every aspect of life in a way that I think a lot of cards simply don't. So the cards themselves are huge. This is the set of cards. Now, the box itself actually has a red lining, which matches the red exterior of the cards. These are stunning and they are huge. That is right against my head. These are the size of my face and I have a big face. So these are really, really sizable cards. Now, they come with this little seal around the middle. So I'm just going to take that off. Oh, they are beautiful. Oh my goodness. <gasps> so here is just one of the cards. This is Surrender. And if you look at the front of the card, it is beautiful, soft touch matte, which is probably my favorite material for Oracle cards to be. And then the back is partially soft touch matte, but you have what's known as spot gloss. This is where they just make one area of the card super shiny. <gasps> it's beautiful. These are absolutely stunning, like stunning. These are unbelievable. So it appears that this is how the cards separate. So these ones all have this soft touch matte and they all look pretty much the same. They have the same edging. They look very similar, just obviously with different designs. This set of cards at the back looks very obviously different. There's something about this set that is different. So I suspect that these are the 14 spell cards. What's so weird about these is that these are the spell cards you can feel the energy coming off this deck. Like you can absolutely feel the workings that have been done on it and it, they're so beautiful. I will start by going through the spell cards so that you can get a gauge of what I'm feeling off these, but they are absolutely stunning. All of the cards are depictions of real life magical practice. So there are items that are stitched together with red stitching, there's wax stripped over them, it's very organic and it's also very processed. I don't know how to describe it, but these spell cards have this super strong energy surrounding them. And I think it's because they do display active magical workings. There are magical items that are stitched together, that are covered in wax, that are collections of sticks and bones and flowers and thread and items. And it's, it's exceptionally potent and you can definitely feel that as I look through the cards. It's very bizarre, but it, it's also very natural and calming at the same time. It's that kind of very comforting energy that I get off these. It's, it's kind of strange. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work through the spell cards first and I'm gonna show you all of the spell cards and then I'm gonna go through the rest of the deck.
Now these are the oracle cards themselves. They are very large. So I will say if you have small hands, you might struggle to shuffle these because that is my hands basically full extension to actually hold the cards. And I have quite large hands. I have quite long fingers. So I would say you might struggle to shuffle them if you have smaller hands, but they are absolutely beautiful. And the size of them makes them really good for having on altars, for showing in spell work and ritual, during ceremony, for meditation, that kind of thing. They are a really, really good size. I love how thought out everything is. Even down to the size of the deck, it's been thought out so that it is very practical for the people that do want to use it in spell work and ritual. Now, I love the red edging. I've never had a deck of cards that has a red edging. I absolutely love it. And it ties in with the red thread that they use throughout the entire deck. And I think that really makes it beautiful. It's very tied together. So let's go through the cards.
So I have to say there were a few cards in this that really kind of drew me in more than any other. And the one that really, really got me is this one. This is the childhood card and I don't know what it is. I think there's something about the tiny paw print inside this much larger paw print. It's just, oh, it's just so beautiful. There's, there's just something about this card that draws me in just so strongly. And I have to say that with the deck itself and with the spell cards, there's something about it that just has this very primal, intuitive, ancestral kind of quality to it. And I don't know if it's the, the kind of ruggedness of these cards, you know, they have hair on them, they are dirty, they have stitching, they are messy. I mean, this one is a really good kind of example of that. It looks messy, but it looks raw. There's something about it that is just so instinctual, so kind of primal that I think this deck is going to be my most used deck of cards. Before this point, it was the Work Your Light deck, but that deck is very, very tailored. It's very artistic and beautiful. And although, yes, the imagery is very evocative, it's not the same kind of energy to me as these. There's something about the... It is, it's the rawness and it's the freedom that's in these cards. They are sometimes quite all over the place. The colours are so vivid. Everything is done very randomly and yet it feels very intentional. And I cannot get over how much I adore this deck. I have never read this deck yet, though as soon as I finish filming this, you know damn well what I will be doing this afternoon. I will be doing some readings with this deck because I have been in love with these cards from the moment I saw that Kickstarter video and ever since then I have been excited to see them and to get them in my hands and I finally have them and genuinely I think these are going to be my most used deck of cards. So once again, this video is not sponsored. They did not send me these cards. I purchased these on Kickstarter about six, nine months ago and they finally arrived. These are absolutely stunning and I am honestly so, so happy that I was able to support two amazing people in their creation of this absolutely wonderful deck. Like immediately, without even having to read them, I can just immediately tell I am gonna love these and they are just so intuitive in the imagery and they're so evocative that I think most people would have no problem reading these cards. I mean, just looking at them, I don't even have to have read the book and I can read these cards. And for me, a lot of decks I can't do that with. And this one, I definitely can. So I wanna say thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. I would love to know in the comment section what your favorite card was. Was it one of the moon cards? Was it a season card? Was it a phase of life card? Was it an element card? I'd love to know what your favorite card was. And do you think that you could read from this deck? Do you like the imagery? Do you not? It's definitely quite an unusual deck. So I'd love to know what you guys think of it. If you did enjoy this video, feel free to give it a like. It really, really means so much to me. If you do have any questions, comments, concerns, video ideas, or just wanna chit chat with the community down in the comment section, feel free to post a comment. And if you do want to find out more about this deck and if you do want to follow them on Instagram and on social media all of the links will be down in the description box give them all the love in the world because this deck is stunning it is the first deck of its kind that I have ever seen and genuinely this style of spell work and the artwork it's it's so beautiful so give them all of the love because they definitely definitely deserve it and if you do enjoy the magical content on this channel or in this video, feel free to hit subscribe. I do try my best to post videos at least once a week. So I hope you guys are staying safe. I hope you have a marvelous magical day and I will see you in the next video. Bye. Thank you.